Hello and welcome back to the channel. Today we'll be making a complete first person character controller from scratch with a bunch of features to enhance the game feel, also known as game juice. These features will include head bob, inertia, and movement FOV change. So let's dive right in. We're going to create a new 3D scene and call it world. For our ground, we're going to use a node called CSG box, which is basically a simple mesh combined with a collision shape that's good for prototyping. Our character is going to use a node called Character Body 3D. We're going to add a mesh to it by choosing the bean shape in the mesh dropdown. We're going to create a collision shape from the mesh by going to this menu and selecting Create Simplified Convex Collision Sibling. If we turn off the visibility on the mesh, we can see that we end up with this disheveled bean that has less vertices than the original, which is good for performance. Let's add a script to our bean. Character bodies get a default code template with movement and jumps implemented, which works well for both first person and third person controllers. In order for the lighting to work properly in our game, let's add a world environment and a directional light to imitate the sun to our scene tree. Let's take a closer look at our bean. The last bit of setup we need to do is adding a camera to him and adding it as a child of a node 3D, which will act as our pivot. If we don't have one and try to rotate the camera, we get some very janky results. Results. If you're curious as to why this happens, I will link to a page in the Godot documentation that explains it really well and also has a code snippet that would let us do it without a pivot. Now if we start up our game, we are able to move around and even jump out of the box, but we can't look around just yet. So let's get cracking on our code. We have the speed and jump velocity constants here. The gravity variable is taken from the default project settings, which is 9.8. Screw that, it's now 9.8. In the physics process, we handle our jump. When the player presses space, we set the velocity so we're going up, and then every tick, we lower this velocity if we are not on the floor until the velocity is in the negatives and we are going down. At the end of each tick, the move and slide function is called, which moves around our character depending on this velocity vector and then changes the velocity depending on collisions. So when we're about to land, our Y velocity is negative 4.5, and then and bam, it's zero. And it stays at zero because we are now on the floor and are no longer changing it. This last code block takes care of movement on the floor. It tells us that we should replace the default UI actions with our own, which we will do in a second. Here we get a vector two movement vector from the inputs and change it to a vector three so we can multiply by where our character is facing, which gives us this movement direction vector. If it's non-zero, which means that we pressed a button, we set the velocity components by multiplying the direction vector by our speed. This next part has a bit of a mistake in it. The intention here was to add friction and slow the player down gradually, but as this thread on the Godot GitHub suggests, it just sets the velocity to zero instantaneously. So let's make that clear in the code. The next step is adding our own input map. We can do this by going into the project settings, naming all of the actions that we want to use in our game, and setting bindings for them. We add our new actions to the code and then see what we need to do. We can see our cursor, so it's not captured and we can't look around. So the first step then is to get rid of the cursor. We can do that in a ready function which runs at the beginning of a scene by setting the mouse mode to captured. After that let's define variables for the head and the camera so we can access them easily in the code. References to nodes have to be saved in on ready variables and if we want to get the path to them we can just drag them from the scene tree. Next to actually rotate the camera we use the unhandled input function which is called every time a player does anything like press a button or move the mouse. We are looking specifically for mouse motion events, so we check if it's of this type. We change the rotation of the head depending on how much the mouse moved relatively, multiplied by the sensitivity, which we're going to add as a constant. Here we're keeping the rotation axes separate, so we're only rotating the head on the y-axis and the camera on the x-axis to avoid the whole rotation order mess. You'll also notice we're rotating the head y-angle depending on relative x distance. This is not a mistake, but rather just a byproduct of how translating mouse movement to camera rotation works. When we move the mouse left and right, we want to rotate around the Y axis, which is pointing up, and when we move the mouse up and down, we want to rotate around the X axis, which is pointing to the side. So after putting all of this together, we can finally look around. Our sensitivity might be a little too high, and also we can do cartwheels with our head. So let's use the clamp function, which can limit the rotation of our camera to a minimum and a maximum value. I'm also getting tired of staring at a white floor with nothing on it, so let's use a bunch more CSG boxes with different color materials to create a map. 
much better. The last thing we need to fix with the basic movement is the fact that we're not really moving in the direction that we're facing. This is an easy fix in the code. Right now, when we set the direction of our movement, we are setting it to where the character body is facing. Instead, we need to set it to where the head is facing since that's the component that's looking left and right for us. Nice. Now let's juice this game up. The first thing that we're going to add is head bob that will help us imitate the character's footsteps by moving the camera up and down. Maybe something like this. Can you guess which mathematical function we can use? That's right. The function of my emotional well-being while I was waiting for Godot 4 to release. I can't believe it's here or the lesser known sine wave. To implement this, we are going to need a couple of variables and constants. First is bob frequency, which will affect how often our footsteps happen. Second, bob amplitude, which will affect how far up and down our camera will go. And finally, we will need a variable that we will pass to the sine function that will determine how far along the sine wave we are at any given moment. We're going to increment this variable during every tick of the physics process by multiplying a couple of things that affect our head bob. First, we want to account for delta, or how much time has passed since last tick. We will multiply this by the speed of our character, since we want to head bob more often when we're running. And finally, we want to make sure that we're only bobbing when we're on the floor and walking, rather than jumping or falling. So, we will multiply the result by the is on floor function, which, converted to a float, will either return 1 or 0. We can then assign the position of the camera to the result of the head bob function that we will pass the t bob variable 2. Let's code this function real quick. It will return a vector 3 variable that we are setting the camera position to within the physics process. Initially, this vector 3 is going to be a zero vector, but we are going to assign its y coordinate to the sine of t bob times bob frequency, and then multiply that by the bob amplitude. So now instead of going from negative 1 to 1 like sine, it will go from negative amplitude to amplitude. The result is a pretty good head bob, but if you're looking for a bit more realism, we can also add a horizontal component to this since our head is also moving left and right when we're walking. This time we're going to assign the position x component to the cosine of time or t bob times bob frequency divided by 2. Still keeping up? Multiply this by bob amplitude as well. I think this will look way better for a lot of games. Now let's add sprinting to make sure that our bob looks good at different player speeds. To do that, we'll change what we set our character velocity to in this code block. Since we now want our speed to depend on whether we press shift or not, it has to be a variable. So let's create a speed variable and change our speed constant name to walk speed, as well as create a new constant called sprint speed. Back in the physics process, we will run a check on whether the player has pressed shift or not and then set our speed variable to either sprint speed or walk speed. With that all together, we can now run like the wind in our game. But let's look closer in some other mechanics. Specifically, there's an issue with the jump where we can stop immediately while in the air if we let go of the movement button. So let's fix that by adding a little bit of inertia to the game. We're going to do this by only giving the player full control of the horizontal movement when they are on on the floor. When they are in the air, we are instead going to interpolate towards the desired velocity using the lerp function, which changes our speed incrementally. This function takes three variables, in this case it's our initial velocity, then our target velocity, and the final one is the decimal percentage of the distance between the two variables that we want to cover in each step. Since our delta variable is usually around 0.05, multiplying it by 2 would make our current velocity move toward the target velocity by 10% each tick. Now when we let go of the movement button midair, we won't just stop right there. You can play around with this value to figure out how much control you want while you're airborne, but I eventually settled on delta times 3. Another thing we can do is fix that running stop mechanic that wasn't quite working in the character template. Just ramp up a little how fast we come to a stop here and bam, inertia done. There's one last thing I want to do to juice this character controller up, and that's changing the camera field of view depending on character speed. For this, we're going to need two constants. The base FOV, which you could change to a variable if the player can set the FOV in your game, as well as FOV change, which will multiply by our speed and add to our base FOV. In the physics process, we will be setting a local target FOV variable to this equation, which is base FOV plus FOV change 
multiplied by velocity quamp. The reason why we want to quamp our velocity is to make sure that our FOV doesn't go too crazy when we're falling when our velocity reaches super high numbers. So let's create a velocity quamped variable which will set to the result of the built-in quamp function and restrict it to the minimum of 0.5 so that we don't change the FOV when the velocity is super low and a maximum of running speed times 2. After that we'll use our favorite lerp function to set the camera FOV smoothly every tick of the physics process. Again the first parameter is the original value, the second is the target value, and the third is the decimal percentage distance that we want to cover. And with that our character controller is complete. The link to the github project will be in the description so you can start where I left off. I might make a second part for this controller if you guys want me to add any specific features to this and if there's enough interest. If the video was helpful drop a like and let me know what you think.